Hey Reddit, did you ever get suspended or expelled from school? If so, what for? I went to the same high school as my kid sister. We didn't hang out, but one day I found her sobbing alone in a corridor. It turned out a boy in her grade had been steadily applying, uh, unwanted attention. She told her teachers and they'd basically said that boys will be boys, and it wasn't really something that the school could do anything about without her filing a formal complaint and getting her parents involved, and that she should stop encouraging the boys by dressing like she did. This kid had my sister terrified out of her mind and had let her know that if she made any more of a fuss, then he would wait until she was alone and make her pay. And so she'd been keeping this all in for weeks, and not letting on to anyone, including me and our folks. She was 15 at the time, and I was 18. Neither of us were the kind of kids who got in trouble. She was pretty loud and gregarious, but I was a big dude who was kind of mild and quiet, not terribly confrontational. I talked to her for a few minutes, and she started sobbing and saying she was scared to go into class after lunch with him. She started shaking and freaking out. I kind of coaxed out of her that he'd made a more serious and slightly more successful attempt at assault, and while she'd fought him off, she wasn't really holding herself together all too well. I got her calmed down and walked her to class told her we'd talk to my folks, and persuaded her to go in and sit down just after the bell rang. The little piece of garbage was grinning and snickering at her with his bros. I watched her walk to her seat and sit down, so I left and went to class. I couldn't think of anything except how angry I was. It was like some kind of pure, calming, incandescent rage that I don't think I've ever come close to feeling since. After about ten minutes, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I stood up, excused myself, left the classroom, walked downstairs, walked into my sister's classroom, and proceeded to beat seven levels of crap out of that kid. The teacher, a guy I really liked and respected, did the responsible thing and tried to drag me off. But I was nowhere near rational. So I hauled off and clocked him as hard as I could and he kind of fell back in a heap. I went back to work on the kid for a bit. When I'd had enough, I told the kid that if he ever touched my sister again, I would touch him back in all the same places, left, and then walked upstairs back into my class, sat down and finished the lesson. Crap hit the fan. The kid went to the ER, and I got hauled in front of the deputy head of the school, a big, scary-as-hell dude, who asked me, in no uncertain terms, what the hell I was thinking, tearing me a new one before telling me I was done and I was going to be expelled. The kid's dad, a very wealthy and influential guy, showed up and demonstrated remarkable restraint in not immediately smacking me around. He said that he would call the police and that I was an adult, and I could expect him to file charges. Like I said, I was kind of a quiet, mild kid, and my instinct was to take my lumps and apologize. But I was tired and my hand hurt. Turned out I'd fractured a knuckle somewhere down the line, and I got kind of shaky and cold, and told the kid's dad that if he was going to call the police, then I'd really like to talk to them about how his son had repeatedly harassed and attempted to assault my sister, and how the school had been informed multiple times but did nothing at all about it. That put the whole meeting on a very different footing. It turned out later on that the kid had done similar things at a different school a couple of years earlier, and that all parties concerned had come to an agreement, whereby it would be settled quietly with no public fuss. I ended up getting suspended for a week and the other kid expelled. Nobody ever said or did anything toward my sister again for the rest of her school career. I had about two months of high school celebrity status out of the whole incident, and I didn't really know how to deal with it and didn't have any interest in it. It was weird to be liked because I'd beat up a 15-year-old. This was a long time ago, and I still feel bad. Intellectually, I know that I did the right thing by my sister, but the teacher I punched out ended up with a truly astonishing black eye and a bruised jaw. Looking back, the school must have pulled out a lot of stops with that guy to make sure their role in things got swept under the rug. It's been 25 years, but I still just feel utterly, utterly ashamed and mortified that I did that to the teacher, who was really a great, great guy. When that last paragraph came up, I thought OP was going to apologize to the guy he beat up. And I was going to be like, no, hold on, buddy, but no. He was feeling bad about beating up the teacher. Fair enough. He got kind of caught in the crossfire there, and that sucks. But at the end of the day, I don't think I can really fault OP for what he did here. I'm admittedly a bit of a pacifist, and I don't think violence is the answer often, but this kid clearly was on a bit of a power trip, not getting the message. And so, uh, I don't know. I hope the thrashing taught him a little something is all. Story 2. I had three days of in-school suspension for playing a game of hot sauce roulette. The rules were that a package of hot sauce would go around the table, and the person that the hot sauce would be passed to would have to twist it once before passing it to the next person until the package burst. When it got to me, it was about 12 twists in. I held it out a little bit, twisted it, and it burst. Not only in my direction, but the sauce actually shot across the table and got in somebody's eye. We tried to keep it quiet, but the hot sauce hurt a lot. The kid really did try to keep it on the down low, 
but he still let out small whines before a teacher came over and asked what was going on. He eventually burst into tears and another kid told the teacher what happened. I was then sent to the office and told my punishment. Story 3. In 99, I was expelled from public school along with a boatload of other students for being a guy with long hair. The superintendent, who had been fired from his previous two jobs and would go on to give himself raises until he was paid more than the governor, implemented a strictly sexist address code policy, stating that guys couldn't have piercings or long hair, that visible tattoos and non-natural hair colors were banned, that certain widths of pant legs were banned, etc. It was all clearly targeting a specific group of people, the skater slash grungy slash freaky folks. And like clockwork, these kids started dropping out of high school and getting expelled, left and right. When we had a protest against it, they sent a school board representative to talk to us. He took the stand and said that we can't be trusted to choose our own dress, when we can't be trusted to sit down in the back of a truck. A reference to a high school student who died the previous day falling from the bed of a moving truck. Absolutely messed up. Story 4. I brought in bullets that I bought in an army museum, got them out in a lesson, and had them taken off me. Two lessons later, I was taken out of class by the lady that deals with the naughty kids. Pastoral teacher was her job title, I think, and she somehow knew what I'd done over the weekend. So you went to the army museum on Saturday then, and took me straight to the headmaster's office. In there was a table set up dramatically in the room with the bullets on it, him with a stern face, and a police officer with a slightly sterner one. Got a bollocking. My headmaster called my mom on speakerphone. She laughed at the stupidity of calling the police and kind of ruined the effect he was going for. And the police officer turned out to actually be quite nice. Showed me how he knew they'd been fired, and that I should just keep them to myself if I ever brought them again. He took them away from me and took names and stuff. I was excluded for two days and spent a week in the inclusion unit, which was nice, because it was built for kids with special needs more than naughty kids and had two dogs, fish, and an Xbox, along with a seemingly unlimited supply of cookies. Almost made me want to get in trouble again. Story 5. I got suspended for three days once. I was playing basketball and a guy threw the ball at my head. He missed, though. I pushed him and told him to screw off. In response, he slapped me in the face. The other kids gathered around, but I decided I wasn't going to fight the guy and left for class. Some kids couldn't keep quiet about the altercation and were yelling across the classroom, Did you hear that OP got into a fight with this guy? Homeroom teacher overheard and sent us to the principal. I was told to miss three days and to get my homework. I said screw that and walked straight home. Story 6. When I was in high school, I was really into collecting hot sauces. I picked up a bottle of Satan's blood on vacation and thought it would be fun to take it to school and goof off with friends. The bottle ended up leaving my control and circulated around the cafeteria. People were eating spoonfuls of it on a dare without knowing its power. A drop will spice a bowl of soup. By the afternoon, several kids had been sent home by the school nurse after consuming it. The concerned parents called and wanted some action taken. So I was given in-school suspension. My parents thought the whole thing was so absurd and hilarious, and ended up putting the suspension slip in a scrapbook with my baby pics and other sentimental items. Story 7. I was suspended for getting swine flu. Senior year, high school, Louisiana, height of the swine flu business. I felt crappy on Thursday afternoon. By Friday, I was dead. Fever of 100 plus. Shaking, hallucinating, the whole nine yards. No one connected the dots, didn't even know I had it until next week, when my doctor sent me to the hospital. I was out of school for two weeks, 11 school days. When I finally got back, I had to submit a note to the office. Well, being that I almost died like three times in the past two weeks, we completely forgot to get it. Well, we called the doctor's office to get a note. Turns out he was on vacation. Wouldn't be back till next week. Called the school, they said, no problem. Turn in my note the following week and immediately get told to wait in the office. The principal wants to meet with you. I get in his office and he asks for my note. Not even a note, it was an essay. Two pages detailing admitting times, fever temps, and contact information to collaborate. I hand it to him, he looks up and down the page, tears it into a million pieces like an angry Neanderthal, and throws it in the trash. He says, You know you have two days to turn in the note when you get back from being sick, right? I explained the situation, but he wasn't having it. My parents were called to pick me up and I was suspended not 30 minutes into the school day. How long? Five days. Oh, and I wouldn't be allowed to graduate. No big deal. Long story short, we have to go to the school board, set up a uh, court time to present our evidence for why I shouldn't be suspended or expelled, and there we show all my doctor's notes, bills, etc., and get everything wiped from my school record and I'm allowed to go back to school. I had a target on my back for the rest of the year with that principal. One time I got a D on some test. He called me to his office and I had to sit there for 10 minutes listening to him telling me that I'll never amount to anything, and that I should just drop out like all the other degenerates. This happened 10 to 15 times after this incident. I graduated with everyone else and went to college. Just so you know, I had never attended this school before in my life. I had just moved to Louisiana. My family moved around a lot. I wasn't a troublemaker and my grades rarely dropped below a B average. To this day, that same principal somehow still has his job. 
Holy power trip. This principal clearly had something he wanted to prove, but all he actually proved was that he was, uh, not looking out for the best interests of the children learning at his school, to say it nicely. Any principal or teacher or anyone working at a school for that matter who says drop out like all the other degenerates is being absolutely absurd and should not have that job. Clearly, you don't like kids that much. Story 8. I got suspended from college. Senior in high school is the equivalent for Americans, I think. It was a weak suspension for having poor attendance. I was always a good kid who had good relationships with teachers in high school. But when I started college, I had a few more intense and frankly garbage teachers. I ended up with anxiety problems about a couple of my subjects in particular, which ended up snowballing and affecting all of my classes. If I was a couple of minutes late for class, I would just skip the lesson or sometimes half the day or other times the entire day. If I woke up feeling particularly anxious, the same thing. If I had any deadlines, etc., I'm sure you get the point by now. If anyone else goes through anxiety disorders or anything related, get some counseling. It really helps. Story 9. High school walking down the hall with a friend. Friend asked for my lighter for a second, so I gave it to him. He burned off a piece of his sweatshirt or something. I wasn't paying attention. Gives me my lighter back and this girl comes up and says, Give me your lighter now. She looked like a sophomore and I was a junior, so I said no and kept walking. Later that day, I got called down. There's the sophomore girl I said no to earlier. Turns out, however, she wasn't a sophomore. She was a new teacher and just looked young. She was so mad that I embarrassed her, she told the principal I was trying to light kids on fire. Not a great day. Story 10. I got one hour of in-school suspension because the principal had to punish me. It was mandatory for fighting. I was in junior high, 13 years old, not 6 foot tall, etc. And my friend asked for the tissues on the school bus. When he was done with them, he threw the box towards the front of the bus, which was a jerk move. The box hit a senior in high school, 18 years old, 6 foot tall, etc. He got up and shouted, Who the hell threw that? I'm gonna beat your butt! Well, my friend was scrawnier than me and I just tend to stick up for people, so I stood up and apologized. Sorry, I was tossing it to the person next to you. That didn't subdue him. He responded, Yeah, well, I'm gonna ride the bus around to the junior high and I'm gonna get off the bus, and then I'm gonna screw your stuff up. So the bus stopped at the high school and dropped everyone off, and he didn't get off. Yep, he totally rode the bus around to the junior high. It was about to get real. So he gets off the bus first, and when I come out the door, he shoves me. Well, that's fine, I can take a shove. Alright, he shoves me again, this is getting old. I'm just gonna walk up to class, I guess. He shoves me again, and I shove him back and say, If that's all you're gonna do, then I can push too. Then he punches me and punches me. Then pulls my very loose t-shirt over my head. There was a scramble, which I don't recall, but I was told what happened by several people. On my end of things, I was fighting for my damn life and ended up being choked from behind. So I started punching over my shoulder, into my attacker's face. What everyone else saw was this. After the guy pushed me and punches me, I countered and decked him right in the jaw. A perfect shot that everyone heard and cringed about. He struggled, dazed, and accidentally grabbed my shirt blindly, which ended up over my head. Not two seconds later, he was tackled by a teacher, but I was still blind. So I attacked the teacher and the bully. Both of them were covered in bumps, scrapes, and bruises. Then the off-duty police officer, which doubled as the school wrestling coach, puts me in a chokehold. I pummeled his face until he gets my shirt over my head and shoves me away while announcing himself. Stop, stop, it's Officer Paul. I'm an officer, you're okay. I quickly gain my bearings and I have horrible realizations of who I was hitting. He walks me to the principal's office and the other teacher walks the bully to the high school. On the way to the office, the policeman is chuckling and saying, So, if you ever want to learn how to wrestle, then you should join up. We could use someone like you on the team. I'm mortified for fighting at school, heading to the principal, escorted by a policeman. I'm surely about to get expelled. What have I done? The officer talks to the principal and they send me in. The principal is bright red and I'm thinking it's because he's so, so mad. He is actually just trying to contain his laughter. Because halfway through telling me my punishment, he just busts his guts, laughing his butt off. Yet another reason I don't think that everything should just be a zero tolerance policy when it comes to fighting. Opie didn't really have much of a choice here, and also this is a hilarious outcome, assuming no one got seriously injured, which it doesn't sound like they did. But a one hour in school suspension is like, you know, a nothing punishment, so fair enough. Definitely sounds like everyone saw the humor in the situation. Except the 18 year old who got the crap beat out of him by a 13 year old? He probably wasn't too happy but deserved. Story 11. Not only almost suspended, but also almost arrested for bullying. I was good friends with this kid in high school named Bedo. Bedo was a pretty quiet kid from Colombia, who happened to have no legs and only one arm. One day I was pushing him in his wheelchair in between classes. He had a water bottle that he had poked a hole in the top of and would squirt onto people's crotches as I talked to them. We did it to this one kid and it honestly looked like he had peed himself and he lost his goddamn mind. 
I was pretty good friends with him, so I didn't think anything of it. Well, an hour later, me and Beto get called into the principal's office. We walk slash roll into the office, and there's a frickin' police officer there. He explains that the kid's mom called and wanted to get the police involved because we were bullies. The principal gave us a long talking to, explaining how if there were any other case of bullying, we would have gotten in trouble. But he thought what we did was kind of funny, and he knew that we were actually friends, and we weren't actively trying to bully him. Story 12. Took them a while. About a quarter of the way through 10th grade, I was walking to class, and realized I couldn't remember the last time I'd opened my mouth to talk to anyone in school. Cumulative years of social bullying were part of that. Some of it was me being disabled and a bit of a space cadet. The three things were pretty interrelated. Home wasn't much better. My mom was dating, and the extent of my interaction with family was being shouted at for an hour or more a night because I wasn't doing all the chores. Or it was sitting around the dinner table while my mom and her boyfriend watched hockey and talked about hockey, which bored me to death. The rest of the time I was left to fend for myself because my mom was working a job and a half and going to university. I just sort of stood there in the hallway and felt deeply, profoundly lonely. Struggling to remember the last time I'd actually had a conversation or said more than two words to anyone. I just started walking right past the classroom and out the door. Went back to class once or twice, same feeling, same issue, and effectively dropped out. They called home twice and I just deleted the messages. Toward the end of the year, and I really feel like this was them trying to cover their butts, but they tried to expel me for skipping classes. My mom and I went to the school and pressured them not to because we really felt like it was just them trying to cover their butts. The problems weren't addressed or fixed, and the next year I skipped all but maybe the first two weeks of class. Lots of time spent writing, playing video games, and watching terrible daytime TV. I got caught toward the end and I got expelled. Kind of counterintuitive. Story 13. In high school I was part of student council. I had access to master keys. I may or may not have made a few copies. Then I may or may not have started a smoke circle for the smokers and stoners on the roof. Charged $2 a week a person to give roof access to avoid cameras and security guards. Also had a king of the ring fight club using hockey equipment and the hockey team. Ran all over the place and got away with it for like 8 months. Because anytime I got caught I just played dumb. Said I was doing student council stuff. When I did finally get caught I got in a lot of crap. I was suspended for a week out of school and a week in school suspension. Which was worse because you're at school but you don't see anyone. Like detention but more hardcore. At home I just had to work and do my schoolwork. Then the school billed me for changing high security locks, but I fought that and didn't have to pay it. I gotta say thanks to mom for that one. But I wouldn't snitch on who I had sold the keys to, so I got it hard. I got caught on camera, and that's how I was busted. But kept the original so I would always have the freedom of movement. Was totally worth it. Story 14. I actually didn't get suspended when I most definitely should've. I've been pretty thick my entire life. And I've been a gentle giant, too. Bullies pick up on this pretty quickly because I'm so big and so non-aggressive they can look tough by picking on me. Well, this was in Bakersfield, California, and waiting at the bus stop with my sister who's pretty manly when one of these bullies comes up and gropes my moob. My sister instantly goes into, I'm gonna whoop his butt, mode and I hold her off. She tells my dad when we get home. My dad, being from backwoods East Texas, tells me I have to beat the crap out of this guy till the cops pull me off or he'll get my sister to do it, and I'll be in worse trouble than I would be at school. So next day, I'm walking to Algebra, the class I share with this idiot. He's standing at the door and says, Sup? I go, full on, water boy. Six foot high school freshman is on top of this guy, beating the ever loving crap out of him. The first punch knocked him down, and I'm just going all out on this dude, and with each punch, his head is bouncing off the floor. An elderly teacher yelled at me, and I stopped got up and looked at her where she grabbed me by the arm and took me and the bully who didn't really understand where he was, much less what happened, to the office. We sit there on opposite sides of the room and I'm shaking from the adrenaline pumping through my veins. He's starting to come back, and the vice principal takes us into his office. He asked what caused the fight and I explained what happened the day before, and that my sister can corroborate my story. He calls my sister over the telephone intercoms and asks her what happened yesterday, then says thank you and hangs up the phone. He looks over at the other guy and says, You've been in here six times this year. I've never seen him before, pointing at me. He looks at me and asks why I did it, what had changed. Well, my dad said I had to or he would get my big sister to do it. He tells me to go to class and I am dumbfounded. I'm expecting to get arrested because it's California in the early 2000s. Nope, I'm sent back to class and never see the other dude again. Someone in my sister's class announced when he came in, some fat white dude beat the crap out of him. Sometimes the only thing you can do is stand up for yourself and make it known you're not to be screwed with. Story 15. They labeled what I did as computer hacking. It was the first case of computer hacking they'd experienced. 
So they suspended me for a week or two, to make an example out of me. The network administrator was incompetent. I found an executable for Quake on the network, so distributed the file access to numerous people. The executable for VNC was available if you looked hard enough. About a dozen nerds were screwing around with it. I tried to impress a girl with these skills and she duly reported me. They locked my access out and I just ignored it and used some other pupil's account, which is what got me caught. Same girl reported me for using computers. I was subsequently not allowed to use any computer in the school unsupervised for the last year of school. I had all the door codes for locked computer rooms, so I used to just go into one of them that wasn't used very often and to log onto an ex-pupil's account. They kept accounts open for two years after student left. At the time, I was doing an A-level in ICT, but technically wasn't allowed on computers unsupervised in my free time, and no teacher would have come along to supervise me. To avoid getting caught, I essentially used the cloud and dropped all my work straight into my Gmail account, printed it in lessons if I was there. I was never caught. I hated that place. The headmaster who suspended me didn't even let me speak to him about it. He just suspended me because he heard of hacking. I was glad when he died. OP, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 you gotta chill with this last sentence, brother. What the hell? The whole story, I was I was on your side. I'm like, oh, these people, they don't get technology or whatever. Stupid punishments. Then you came in with that last sentence right at the end. You lost me completely. Like, come on, man. Sure, he can suck as a principal or headmaster or whatever he was. And you can be upset with him. Saying you're glad he died when he didn't really do anything that bad to you. That's... That's too much, man. Story 16. In sixth grade, I wrote some stupid graffiti in a bathroom stall. A girl in my class tattled on me, and I had to spend my afternoon cleaning it off the stall with the custodian. The next afternoon at lunch, I saw the girl who tattled on me head into that same stall. I made a joke it was the haunted graffiti stall, and that if you go in there seven days later, someone will come to your house and end you, a la the ring. I got called in the principal's office two hours later. Same girl tattled on me again, and because the year prior I had received in-school suspension for terroristic threats, I told the teacher I would end him if he gave me a certain multiplication problem. This time I received 10 days out of school suspension for the same reason. I spent my two weeks hanging out at my mom's senior center and generally enjoying life, but it still sucked. Story 17. Got suspended for three days. I wrapped what I swear to god was an industrial strength stink bomb, the liquid in a vial kind, in some plastic wrap, and put it in a kid's backpack. I figured he would roughly put his backpack down on the bus ride home and it would break then. Nope. Kid slams it down in the hallway in the middle of the day. The smell was so awful. Like the most aggressive rotten eggs you've ever smelled. The whole school, 400 people K-12, evacuated. I had one friend who was in on it and his lips were sealed, but the principal just knew it was me. I was a regular for this kind of stuff after all. Well, I got suspended for three days. Sent home to an irate father who put me to work repairing fences and stuff in the middle of the summer. Not what a high school senior wanted to be doing. I came back and I was basically a hero to some. And that guy who will do anything for a prank to others. Notoriety was nice. People for a while there thought it was a terrorist attack, and were happy to know it was just a poorly planned prank. I guess I probably shouldn't have done it on the first anniversary of 9-11, though. Story 18. I was a junior in high school, and had an English teacher who had it out for me. Sadly, this was not a smoking hot English teacher like I see these days. She was an angry old crone who hadn't been laid in years, but I digress. We had time at the end of every class to read a book of our choice. I was reading a book about the Holocaust. Cute girl next to me forgot a book and she asked if she could borrow one. I handed her my book and said, well, this is a book about the Jews and the Holocaust if you're okay with reading that. Teacher overheard that comment and flipped her crap. She called me into the hall and sent me to the administrator's office saying that Jew was an offensive word. No different than the n-word apparently. Fast forward and I'm in the admin's office. They swiftly handed me down a three-day suspension for using racial slurs. No smartphones at the time, but I managed to grab a dictionary and march into the principal's office and argued I did not use a slur. I used an acceptable description of the book I was reading. He upheld the administrator's decision. Three-day suspension it was. I was upset, and have always been a rebel at heart. I left school that minute and went straight to the police station to get a permit to protest. Generally, you had to have a 30-day notice to get a permit issued, but I was able to get my permit approved with no notice. I showed up the next day right across the street from our school with 9 or 10 close buddies. We held signs about censorship, tyranny in the school systems, and general cowardliness by administration. The principal came out after about 45 minutes and said, Get to your class. Your suspension is no longer valid. I felt on top of the world that day. Story 19. I found a note saying that one of my friends was gay. The note was written by him, and that his dad was abusing him at home. Told a teacher about the note. A girl who didn't like me somehow overheard the conversation between the teacher and I, and told the entire school he was gay. And then told teachers I was spreading rumors about my friend's sexuality. I got suspended for three days, and then they 
tried to ban me from all athletics, extracurriculars, etc. for the next year, after my punishment of no extracurriculars for 30 days was over. They brought in my family, my friend's family, and questioned him about his sexuality and what his dad was doing, which he of course couldn't admit to the teachers for his dad's sake even though he had bruises, and the girl's family who didn't like me. The principal told me that I spread this rumor because I wasn't loved at home, and this was a way for me to get attention and get love. I have great parents and had a great childhood. This woman knew nothing about me. Every admin who was involved in this resigned the day before school was out for the summer. Story 20. Got suspended for an entire week in high school, along with our entire computer information class. Someone who they later found out wasn't even in our class more or less got into the grading database, changing a bunch of people's grades, and some higher and some lower. I guess to avoid suspicion of who specifically changed them. Well, this jerk did it on my computer. Luckily, I wasn't there that day. Next day, I come in, and the school officer whom I'm cool with and the principal are in my class waiting for me. They ask where I was yesterday, and I replied to Tampa, doing research for my paper, like I already told them the Friday prior. I gave them my sister's number to verify, but they interrupted me. They were going to suspend just me, but my teacher let them know that the IP address of the extra computer within the database that day traced back to the classroom, so someone must have changed them physically within it. Principal asked just once, who did it? Everyone's looking around like they have no clue. He shrugs and says, guess we gotta suspend them all until we figure it out then. We were promptly asked to call our parents slash drive home. Oh, I was mad at first, but they figured out who it was the next week letting us all off the hook for any of the classwork slash homework slash tests we missed due to being out. The grades aren't recorded by changes, but day by day with no actual ID. So they had to go around asking teachers for accurate grading. Thing is, my teacher in history basically didn't want to be bothered and told them it's all good without looking. And my D went to an A, no questions asked. I've never been a fan of punishment that hits everyone because one person screwed up, or not even screwed up, did something bad, just because they can't find out who did it. But on the other hand, it sounds like it went pretty alright for OP. The punishment ended up not really being a punishment in the end. So hell yeah, OP. We take those. Anyway, that is all the stories we have for today. There were a lot of stories in here where I was on the OP side, but I guess that makes sense, because they're gonna write it in a way that makes them look good, but still. A lot of justified actions taken that just happen to result in a suspension. School punishments can be so weird and arbitrary sometimes, so it's bound to happen. Have any of you been suspended or expelled from your schools? What happened? Throw it in the comments. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, and I will see you in the next one.